which was in the 2004 Olympics and has been a terror as a pro. And he said, I'll take the first round to see what Matagua has. I want to box a little bit more against him, but if I see the opportunity to take him out, I'll go after him. And with that in mind, Al, three of Lopez's last five fights have been first round knockouts. <laughs> A good indication that it is possible. There's some precedent setting going on, that's for sure. Lopez comes in off our TK09 over Oliver Lanchi. Break, break, let go, let go. Well, Matagua will be in front of Lopez. What has to work for Matagua to be effective? He's awkward. It has to be effective. If it's not, he's a little bit too easy to hit for one month. Right hook by Lopez. He has a great right hook, and most of his knockdowns and knockouts come from the right hook, but when we asked him, what's your best punch, he said, the straight left. It's just that everybody's so busy avoiding that, I have to knock him out with the right hook. And there is that right hook landing by Lopez. And I love to see a southpaw with a good right hand, a good right power hand, because it's so rare. Yes, you are 100% correct, and it's very effective. Now, Matagua, who we mentioned, had a wild, oh, left hand lands by Lopez. He's landing big power punches early in round one. Bad news for Matagua. Now, Matagua was way behind in his fight with Tomas Villa and came back to beat him in TKO on the 10th. It was a wildly exciting match but I don't know that he can afford to give that kind of advantage away to Lopez tonight. No, not at all. Uh, Lopez is an explosive uh, combination puncher as we, we've seen already. The right hook that kind of staggered Matawa a little bit. He can't afford to get hit with too many of them uh, shots. They want Matagua to move to his left as you're supposed to do against the lefty. And they want their right hand, but also some left hooks what his camp has urged him to do. Well, it's not taking very long for Weinman to figure Matagua out. And the reason for that is Matagua's walk, walking right into punch. Right. And his hands are very, Matagua's hands are very low. Okay. Matagua, I mean, his, his style is very easy to figure out. He's going to be right there in front of you. It's totally different from uh, Weinman's last opponent, Oliver Lanchi, who gave him a lot of movement and had some kind of awkwardness to him. That's why the fight lasted nine rounds actually one got caught a couple of times with some straight rights from uh, oliver Lanchi. but matawa is going to be right there in front of him all, all night long as you point out a very different style well, it's been an excellent first round for lopez and matagua goes down but not from a punch a slip his balance has been an issue also for matagua so he got past round one anyway Keep your hands up high now, okay? Don't just rush in there now, okay? You just jab, keep your head down. Okay? Give me the buck. Give me the buck. Okay? Keep your hands up. Stay relaxed. Stay calm. Okay? Keep your jab out. Okay? Put your head down. Be careful with the head. Bring him in close, okay? Well, there you go. Don't stand in front. Keep stepping around. Keep going out that left. Shut it up. That's the voice of Bo Bobby Boogaloo Watts you saw in there, who we mentioned, one of the few to be able to beat Marvin Hagler. We head into round number two. This one is scheduled for 10 with Juan Manuel Lopez on the right of your screen defending uh, his junior featherweight championship at 122 pounds against Rogers Matagua from Philadelphia by way of Tanzania. This is a 12 round battle, of course. This is a really good chance for Juanma to show the diversity he has because with an opponent coming to him, as Matagua is, Juanma can box a little bit, show a little bit of movement. He's been an, just an assassin in most of his fights. And you see punches in round one, very, very high percentage for Lopez. That's the number that jumps out at you. Matagua now a little bit more effective with his pressure. At least he's landing a couple of punches 
to Lopez, but still getting hit with big counter punches. And the awkward style of Matagua is certainly difficult. But you make the point, Steve, that Lopez is showing some of the boxing skills he wanted to show in this fight because of Matagua's style. Needs to be a little bit careful with Matagua's awkwardness. He, he's coming in with his head a lot, and they did tell him in a corner in the last round, be careful with his head, so he needs to at least palm touch him with his jab. That way he won't run into a headbutt. And, you know, usually when you're a right-handed guy and a left-handed guy are fighting, that usually is the case. Yes. Left hand by Lopez. He uses all of this big ring at uh, Madison Square Garden here in the Wamu Theater. Right hook and a, a nice right lands by Matagua, but then Lopez comes back with the right hand. Matagua's starting to throw the right hand a little bit better, but he's paying the price by getting hit with combinations on, on his way in. Yeah, he's swinging a little bit too uh, wild. He needs to shorten up on his punches. The guy that is shortening up on his punches is Lopez. That's why he's connected him. He's beating him to the punch. I mean, Lopez, is he's just an all-around fighter. He knows how to adapt to all kinds of styles. So far, he's, he's doing great here, having no problem with the, the Tanzanian fighter, uh, Matawa. Straight left hand moment to go to the body by Lopez as we're with about a half minute left in this round. Matagua's letting that right hand go. Of course, that's the, usually the formula for success against the lefty. And this is the first lefty Matagua's face in seven years. That's amazing. He fought a lefty about four years ago, but the guy fought right-handed. So this is his first <laughs> lefty in a long time, and it's taking him a little while to adjust, but he's starting to use that right hand. That was Agapito Sanchez, who normally is a lefty and did not fight that way. Good right hook landed by Lopez. So Matagua continues to attack awkwardly. And now landed a nice left hook to the head of Lopez. But one, oh, another hook by Matagua right at the bell. So that at least made things a little interesting. I think that woke up for Lopez a little bit. Now it's starting to look like a Rogers Matagua type fight. Yeah. In round two, Rogers Matagua found some success with the right hand. Always the best weapon against the lefty, and that was a beautiful right hand. You see Lopez moving away for one of the few times where he had to move away and didn't choose to move away. Well, we talked about the tenacity of Matagua, and you know, he's one of those fighters that we said he earned his way here. He fought a lot of good fighters, not necessarily great fighters, but good fighters. And he's shown a lot of grit, and he's showing it in this match as well. Matagua, the fighter from Tanzania by way of Philadelphia, against Juan Manuel Lopez. And Lopez, who boxed effectively over the first couple of rounds, got caught a little bit in round number three. Let's see if he can continue to keep Matagua at bay. Yeah, that's what he needs to do. Uh, give him angles, give him movement, lose his speed, don't stay in front of him. I, I tell you what, when he when he caught him with that right hand, when Matawa caught him, before that came a headbutt, he headbutted him, then he came with the right hand. So that might be just a dirty tactic. You never know Matawa. He is from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And we just lost about uh, and how many subscribers are? And <laughs> Bernard Hopkins, I mean, I, if he's listening, he is known for hit buddy. So. Big left hand by Lopez. So Lopez flat at a right hook, but Matagua just won't stop coming at a right hand by Matagua. Rogers Matagua came here to give it his all, and he has. And Lopez power punching here in this round, but a right hand lands by Matagua. And this is looking, as you said, Steve, like a typical Matagua fight. Right hand clubs the head of Lopez, and he lands a left. A right by Matagua, and another left by Lopez. Round three has turned out to be something special. It's a Matagua-type fight. The question yes. is, does that suit yeah. Lopez well? Not at all. That Lopez is making the mistake of, of standing in front of him, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's too early in the fight. He needs to work the body, get him tired, keep boxing him, 
and then try to finish them up in the later rounds. Now, part of the reason is Matagba won't stop coming to him, so he's put a lot of pressure yeah, on him as well. He's being forced to the view. And stand in front of him. There's some awkward action. Eddie Cotton doesn't intervene, but uh, when they get back to their feet. But round three has been exciting. It's been wild. A right hand by Matagua lands. Under a minute left to go. Right hook by Lopez. But this is not the kind of technique Lopez wants to show. Some of those are clubbing punches, and there's a good straight left hand. Matagua's hands are at his waist, but he's wailing away. Lopez is still a little bit out of range. He's, he's throwing big power big punches. Big right hand landed to the head of Lopez. Stop, stop, stop. Caught over the left eye of Lopez now. Did it come from a clash of heads or a punch? Good right hand by Lopez. The plot thickened in round three. Hey, Tyler, you're the black man of turn. Okay? Tyler, you're doing good. Keep your head down, right? Boy, the action in round three really picked up. And you know what? I don't know if you give that round to Rogers Matagua, but it was a great round for Rogers Matagua. He turns this fight into a brawl, and maybe the most important thing of all, in trading shots with Juan Lopez, he showed what we thought going in. He could take it. And they ruled it was a clash of heads. So that's what caused that punch. So in order for them to... Uh, there, there goes the head again. No, 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 no. We're in round number four of this 12-rounder championship match in which Juan Manuel Lopez brought his glittering undefeated record in against gritty veteran Rogers Matagua. Matagua has taken some monstrous punches like that left hand from Lopez, kept coming, landed his own, and landed another left hook did Matagua. Lopez brawling with him. Is that going to work for him? Now, the cut has been, is not bleeding right now over the eye of Lopez. Boy, some huge shots from Lopez this round. Matagua looks like he's off balance after he gets hit. Hard to tell whether it's because his balance isn't that good or whether because he's getting rocked by the shots. Yeah, it's a very good point. His balance wasn't good, Matagua, early in the fight. I think it's a little bit of both. He's getting hit, and I'm getting splattered with blood here. <laughs> this is one of the few times it's not your own cut. <laughs> left hook by Matagua, and a left hook to the body. He's making Lopez retreat. Lopez may be getting hit out, but he seems totally under control. And his body language and his demeanor indicate that he's very comfortable yes. with what's going on right now. Well, he's relaxed, that's for sure. Right hand to the body by Matagua. But I don't know if Lopez is completely comfortable, Steve. I think there's some, I think there's some issues for him in terms of this kind of pressure right now. We'll see. You may well be right. Well, Matagua's landing. There's no doubt about that. Lopez putting distance between himself and Matagua. That, that's exactly what he needs to do. Yeah. He's to throw more jabs. He's only throwing one jab. He needs to double up, triple up on the jab. We're in round number four of the scheduled 12 rounder. Juan Manuel Lopez, the champion. And Rogers Matagua, he's in the white trunks, battling away. Big left hook misses by Matagua. Both men have landed significant punches in this round. So far, Al, I would say I'd sum it up in two words, as advertised. Yes, that's exactly right.
have to jab him. You have to jab him. Be patient. Okay, Tiger. Please, Tiger. Come on, let's do it, Tiger. Okay, you can do it, man. Come on, bring it out of me. Okay, keep letting him quit. He's a poo poo. Check it out. As we head into round number five of this championship match, Juan Manuel Lopez, the champion in the orange trunks, battling Rogers Matagua, the challenger in the white trunks. A revealing statistic, Lopez only averaging eight jabs per round among his 61 punches, and I would think that's a little low for him, no? Well, it's very low given that Matagua's coming at him. The jab should be the, the prominent punch in his arsenal right now. Left hand lands as Eddie Cotton tries to break the two fighters. Lopez using all of this ring. He has used it uh, at times very effectively in terms of his movement. Good straight left hand again by Lopez. Right hook by Lopez. From the top foot, he just, just keeps coming. coming. That's a knockdown, I guess, uh, Eddie Four, Cotton's calling it. Might five, have been a punch that sent him six, down. Hard to tell. Seven, eight. It's ruled a knockdown. Left hook by Matakwa lands as Lopez swings wildly. Matakwa with 18 KOs among his 25 wins. And for the record, that's the third time in his career Matag has been down. He has a very, very dependable chin. And I don't know if that was from a punch or not. I really can't say I saw it. It was very hard to tell. Yeah, the way he went down was a little awkward, as if it were from something other than a punch. Yeah, I think he was a little bit out, out balance too. And he might have got caught with his shot, but he's more out balance. Now, Lopez not throwing too many jabs. Uh, Matag has thrown almost none in this fight. Left hand again by Juan Manuel Lopez. Matagua lands an overhand right, and a hook. It, when it's messy on the inside, Matagua gets some things done. Yeah, you see, if you didn't know Matagua, you never saw him fight before, you'd see his head getting snapped back, and you'd say, ah, he's getting, he's getting pummeled. This, he may not win fighting this way, but this kind of fight is exactly his best chance to win. And we would refer you back to the match he had with Tomas Vila back in November of 2008 in Tucson, where he was losing dramatically came back in the 10th round to win that fight so it's while Juan Manuel Lopez is certainly on a different level than his opponent that night there is a precedent for it happening and he's hanging in there against Lopez and Lopez landing these power punches but they're not enough to really stop the tackle. there's another good right hook by Lopez Lopez fought a very smart round gave him a lot of movement and that's what he needs to do so, another round goes into the books, and that's one that will include a knockdown on behalf of Juan Manuel Lopez. Let's take a look at what was called a knockdown. Is there a punch? Well, you know what? That right hook by Lopez went around the neck of Matagua. One more look. You see that it does not land flush. I, I wouldn't call that a knockdown. And we see Lopez here with a nice right hook. Now, that, that one looked like it staggered Matagua, but it seems like Lopez didn't capitalize on it. It looked a little bit shaky there. We head into round number six. It appeared as if he kind of cuffed him and sent him down, did Lopez, but, you know, that's in slow motion. It's a little easier for us to see at that speed. Here in round six, almost at the halfway mark of this championship match, in which Juan Manuel Lopez defends his junior featherweight championship against Rogers Matagua, the 
31 year old from Philadelphia stop, 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 who was came from Ta Tanzania and has had a pro career filled with idiosyncrasies including the fact that he once fought three fights in three weeks in 1998 and also fought three fights in a month in the year 2000. Matagua formerly managed by the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Joe Perello, who manages him now, said that uh, before he came on the scene, they may have overworked him just, just a little. Just a bit. little. Yeah. We can't call three fights in three weeks. This guy fought three <laughs> fights in three weeks. That's a pretty busy pace. Yeah, that's it's for sure. Brutal. Halfway through round number six, and speaking of pace, in this round, things have slowed just a little, but who can blame these fighters? It's, this fight has been fought at a torrid pace. Lopez in the fifth defense of his junior featherweight title. We mentioned that he scored 13 knockdowns in his last six fights. Now he adds another knockdown to that list. Good jab, a couple of good jabs by Matagua. And a little smile from Juanma there as he danced out of the way. There's a little bruising underneath the left eye of uh, Lopez. Nothing dramatic. Back on his toes, Lopez doing exactly what his corners tell him to do. There's, there's no need for him to slug it out with this guy. I mean, we, we see that whenever he stands in front of him, that's when Matago gets the best out of him. So why stand in front of him? Just use your boxing skills, move around. He's got the speed, he's got the power, he's got the legs, he's still young. Well, he mentioned that they thought they would have to box a little bit more against Matagua, and that is exactly what has happened here. Yeah, I think he figured that out from the first round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for five rounds, Matagua made Lopez fight. He's got to keep doing that. He's got to keep trying to do that. On the outside, he's not going to win any rounds. Under a half minute left here in round number six. Now more action in the center of the ring. A little awkward, but still they both wail away. Trying to land punches in Matagua, as has been the case for this whole fight, continues to move forward. Round number six comes to a close. We've reached the halfway mark in this bout. Boogaloo Watts with some impassioned pleas to his fighter Go. in that corner as Roger Matagua, the challenger, comes out to face the champion Juan Manuel Lopez. Lopez, a 2004 Olympian for Puerto Rico, lost in the second round of the Olympics, had a 126 and 24 amateur record. He is, of course, undefeated as a pro. Started boxing when he was 10 years old. It's been a, a lifetime of boxing for him. He's 26 right now. He told us earlier yesterday, he said, I have to be smart to win this fight, and that's exactly what's turning out to be the case. Yeah, I think he's, you know, after the fourth or fifth round, he figured out, hey, I got to get on my toes, use my boxing skills, move around. That's exactly what he's doing. I don't know if he's going to settle for a decision, but, you know, Matagua is, is slowly wearing down. Oh, might, right hand by Matagua. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> yeah. He, well, I was going to say, maybe he might be able to catch him coming in, you know, but well, it look like. He landed a big right hand. Steve, he's not, Matagua, the Gary lands the hook, not cutting the ring off, but still managed to get, get some punches in. He is, and, and the longer stop, this stop. fight goes, you have to be impressed with Lopez's ability to change gears. The pace has slowed from the first four rounds. And, 10 rounds or more. Lopez one time in his career. Matagua 14 times. Yeah, that's a very significant statistic. And 
Matagua landing a lot of punches in this round. And Lopez's hands are low. Big oh. right by Matagua. Uh, the best round of the fight so far for Rogers Matagua. Who is fighting every bit like a Philadelphia fighter. Coming forward and showing great resolve and grit. There have been a couple That's of fighters it. from that city that did we, that. we got to win them fans back now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, who are you talking about? You're the one yeah, that this <laughs> I thought we were a team. <laughs> what do you mean yeah. we, Kimo Salvi? Oh, so, so you guys are not sticking with me. Yeah. We're with you, Raul. We're with you. Uh, we'll we'll stay with you. <laughs> a minute left, under a minute left to go in round seven, and Rogers Matagua maybe has changed the dynamic of this fight. We'll see as it continues, but it's been a round in which the first round in which you can honestly say he probably won a round. And an important point out, when, if Lopez is going to try to use the ring, he's got to jab a little bit more. He's not landing or yeah. throwing any jab. Very good point. That's exactly true. About a half minute left in the round. Matagua landed a left hook just a moment ago. I don't know that he's hurt Lopez dramatically with any he's punching. There's a nice right by Matagua. And Lopez counters himself. Lopez is missing a lot. There's a right hook by Lopez that landed. He's fighting Matagua's fight this round. So round seven, the first one that Matagua has made real oh. strides in. Another right hand by Matagua at the bell. Shots are very wide, the right hands and the left hooks, but Lopez doesn't seem to be able to slip them. So we'll see Lopez uh, landing a straight left, but Matago countering with a good solid punch of his own. I mean, this was a excellent, excellent round for Matawa. Might be trying to turn the tides here in this next round. This could be a pivotal round in the fight. Can Lopez take command of this fight again clearly lopez is ahead on all the scorecards we would imagine yes. but here in round in this round lopez trying to take control again another right hook by lopez an excellent punch the two things lopez needs to do more jab body punch he did a lot of body punching early he hasn't done much since here in round eight of this 12 round championship match juan manuel lopez in the orange trunks the champion Putting his junior featherweight title on line against Rogers Matagua, the 31-year-old challenger from Philadelphia who emigrated to this country from Tanzania in 2000, has fought his way through a tough boxing schedule, and this is the chance of a lifetime for him, and he's doing everything he can with his skill level to make it work. Uppercut by Matagua, I haven't seen that, and another straight left hand by Lopez. They both land big power shots. Right hand by Matagua. And a left by Matagua. And a big right hook by Lopez. Tell you Matagua, that's a that's a tough guy. <laughs> he has He's taken what Lopez could dish out and given plenty back. Steve, you made the point that the Matagua punches are a bit wide, and that's probably why they're not having a little more impact on Lopez. Yeah, Matagua's a volume puncher. He's not a one-punch guy. But if you land enough shots and the round's mouth, you can wear your guy down, and that's Matagua's champ. Right hook by Lopez. Now, the cut that developed over Lopez's eye has not reemerged. That was early in the fight in the third round. Stop, stop. Pick your head up. Come on. Pick your head up. Pick your head up. Both men showing a little bit of fatigue, and why not? This has been fought at a very high pace. Jab by Matagua, a nice straight left hand by the 26-year-old Lopez. And if Rogers Matagua has an awkward style, which he certainly does, amazingly, though, he has been able to get by with that and sustain with those big shots of Lopez. 
I don't know if, if Lopez is just trying to make a statement and prove something here and try to win with an impressive win, but I mean, oh, he just got caught with a wild right uppercut by Matagua. And then he blasts yeah. Matagua with his own right hook and sends him back. Matagua may be in a little trouble here. Big right by Matagua. Wow. He is throwing those punches huh. from New Jersey. This is a fight, guys. Oh, oh, oh. oh, at the bell, the right hand is cut. Tr tried to break them off. They love it here at the Wamu Theater in Madison Square Garden, and why not? He's tired. This is fun. He's tired. Okay. He's tired, tired. But well, look. Look. You're going too wide. You're going too wide. You're going too wide, Tiger. You got that fucker. You heard him, okay? You hear what I'm saying, Tiger? You got him. Back that box up. Keep back him up. You give him too much money. We don't want Juan Manuel Lopez to box anymore. We want him to punch because this is what we get when he does. This is thrilling toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Both guys throwing bombs. They may not be technically perfect punches, but look at him going back and forth. And Matagua looked Shut like he out. was hurt, but then he came back and landed a couple of shots of his own. A common theme in this fight. At the bell there, we saw that Go. right hand as the referee was trying to get in, and that was a significant punch by Matagua, one of the straightest he's thrown. We head into round number nine. Some thought it wouldn't get this far, but here it is. Matagua in the white trunks, the challenger. Rogers Matagua, 31 years old, with a 25-12-2 record, 18 KOs. Lopez, 26-0 with 24 KOs. He is the champion at 26 years of age. It has been a wild fight, only one knockdown that in round number five, in which Matagua was sent to the canvas. When this, yes, in round number five. And that was more of a flash knockdown. Right hand by Matagua as Lopez pushes him back. Left hook to the body by Matagua. Big right by, that one may have hurt Lopez. Both men are off balance. Uh -huh. They're throwing some bombs in there. Here in round nine, Matagua has continued the pressure. Well, this is six, Juan, Juan Manuel Lopez's sixth title fight. Stop, this stop, is the first guy who's been competitive with him. And I have Manuel Lopez up 67-74 uh, after eight rounds, but Matagua is certainly competitive with him, if not a threat to win. And even that score, let's just say your score is in line with the judges, which it could well be, that means that Matagua has a chance if he wins these rounds or gets a knockdown. I mean, that, that's why there's no need for... Lopez to, to stay in front of him like that. I mean, I got him ahead 278 to 73. All he's got to do is keep moving and, you know, hold him and jab well, and box. But I, I guess he's being forced by Matawa or either that or he just wants to make a statement and try warning, to knock him out. Could be a warning to Lopez for hitting low by Eddie Cotton. Right hook gets Matago off balance. And another right hook by Lopez. Could be also that Lopez is tired and can't lose all this ring now. We'll see. In the education of Juan Manuel Lopez, this is a critical fight because for the first time in his career, he's hitting somebody with everything he has and nothing's happening. It happened with Jerry Penalosa, but the difference in that fight, Jerry Penalosa wasn't punching back. Matag was punching back. And he was able to stop him in the ninth round. He has only been into the tenth round, Juan Manuel Lopez, and won that with a TKO win. So we're headed into some uncharted territory for Juan Manuel Lopez. Both fighters uh -oh. reckless. Both fighters reckless. I don't blame one more than the other for the for the butting here. And I believe that made the gash over the right eye. Well, big left hand by Lopez. Did he finally hurt Matagua? Another right at the end of the bell. And you know, Eddie Cotton may start taking a point away from Matagua. He's doing that at the end of every round, hitting when they're being broken. A lot of plots and subplots here. Listen in. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Get some air. Take a deep breath. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. You're, you're throwing too much to the top. Throw to the chest. You see Matago with a huge right hand. That shot wasn't that wide. But Lopez is there to be hit. And later in the round, watch the heads. Now that's intentional. Uh -oh. That's clearly intentional. That looked that it came from Lopez. We'll see some wild punching by both guys. Lopez getting the best of that exchange. I'll tell you what, a lot of a lot of head butting and wild swings inside that both fighters doing inside fighting. It's become a brawl here in round number 10. It is a pure six brawl. Both men are going at it in every way possible, and that includes some questionable tactics by both. Juan Manuel Lopez, the champion in the orange trunks. In the white, it's Rogers Matagua. Only once before has Lopez been as far as this into the 10th round. Matagua has been 12 rounds twice in his career. Now uh, Lopez complaining about a low blow and then landed one back right away. The Marcus of Queensbury rules have been bent tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> Lopez trying to move. We're in round 10 of this 12 rounder, about a minute gone in this round. Matagua continues to come forward. Both men punching a little bit less in this round. Another big body punch by Lopez, and Steve, you mentioned that was one of the things he needed to do more of. Halfway through the round now in number 10. One knockdown in this fight, that was back in round five, where Matago was put down in kind of a flash knockdown. Lopez dominated the early rounds, but toward the mid to late rounds, it's been Matagua coming back. Big hook and a right hand by Matagua. Oh, oh my. Let's go. Some swelling under the left eye of Lopez, courtesy of those right hands. Juan Manuel Lopez is fighting Roger Matagua's fight now. Whether he will lose it remains to be seen, but this is what Matagua wanted. And Eddie Cotton has been very patient with both guys, yes. perhaps patient to a fall. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. But a lot of composure shown by Juan Manuel Lopez. Yes, because, it, you know, he still has retained a certain amount of poise here. But these are tough rounds. Right hand by Matagua. And there's the jab of Lopez. And a left hand. Matagua keeps coming. Excellent shape. Big bombs exchanged, and Matagua lands a right hand. Lopez looks like he's got some issues. Wow. What a fight. Matagua sends himself down. that were thrown when they traded. There's a low blow by the African. Amazing leverage they're getting for this late in the fight. You get the impression that any of these shots landed flush right there. A tremendous shot by the African. And, uh, There's an African uh, swinging wild there. Falls to the ground. Uh, the crowd thought it was a knockdown, but it was more of a slip. He was out of balance from swinging wild. This is a round that Juan Manuel Lopez has never seen in his boxing career. Matagua's been here twice before. 
Power punches in round 10. 29 out of 51 landed by Lopez. 24 out of 50 landed by Matagua. That shows you the tenor of that round. Matagua in white, 31 years old, from Philadelphia. Born in Tanzania. Juan Manuel Lopez, the pride of Puerto Rico. 26-year-old, undefeated champion, making his fifth title defense. And it's a title defense right now that in some question. Oh, he's in tough tonight. And if Matagua continues to rally, that fifth round knockdown, which might not have been a knockdown, that extra point could be key. Well, oh. you're right. A left oh. on the right hand. Lopez hit with some big shots here in the 11th round. Remember, he has never been to this round before. How will he hold up? Matagua just flailing away. Lopez's legs still look very good. Good left hand by Lopez. And Steve, you made the point earlier, it's not as if Juan Manuel Lopez isn't landing big power punches. He is. They're just not having the effect they normally do. And he's not used to that. This crowd is in a frenzy now. Halfway through round number 11. Lopez lands another straight left hand, but when he comes in now, he is squaring himself up, Lopez, making himself an inviting target for Matago. Yeah, he is. He's opening up. When he square up like that, you're open for everything, especially from the way Matago punches. He punches from all angles. He catches you with some crazy shot. There you go. Oh, another Overhead. straight left by Lopez. And a right hook. And finally, Matago looks like he may have been hurt, and he holds on. What can hurt Rogers Matagua? Under a minute left to go in round 11. Now with Matagua, maybe you want to call those shots he slips instead of the ones <laughs> that land because there are, there are a lot more of those. <laughs> That's for sure. Half a minute just about left to go. Good body work by Lopez. And Lopez has taken some control toward the end of round 11. Yeah, he has his, uh, kept his composure. Back to his movement. Using his uh, speed, taking his jab out there. The technique of Lopez, though, is not what you would anticipate from him. And it's gone south a little, but he's had a good round 11. Big left and a right by. Oh, left hook by Matagua and a right. Lopez is in trouble. How much time left in that Wow. Round? He makes it through the 11th round. Lopez staggers to his corner. We look back at the last round. For the first time, Lopez looked like he was ready to go. Are you tired? As we head into round 12, each of these fighters has a mission. For Lopez, it is to survive the 12th round. And for Matagua, it is to do what he did in the last round. Did that one minute rest do enough for Juan Manuel Lopez? It's very simple, Al, at least on my card. Lopez finishes the fight on his feet, he wins. But that's no given right now. And also, the, oh my, a right hand by Matagua. And a right hook by Lopez. Wow, he's throwing all right lead. That's the way to beat a left hander, all right leads. Both men are stumbling around the ring, but Lopez is genuinely hurt. Lots of time left here in round number 12. No, 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 no. Oh, he's holding on. While technique has gone south, this is a wildly exciting fight. Lopez in big trouble. He is in trouble. He has to hold. It's his only chance, Al. I think you're right, Stephen. I don't know that he can right now. It's, a, it's really a time issue. Left hook. Lopez trying desperately to hold on. 
And Tawa's got plenty of time, plenty of time to get him out of there. A minute 45 is about an eternity at this point. Matagua in a fight of the year candidate in 2008, in one in 2009. But for Lopez, much at stake, an undefeated record. What they thought was superstardom. It's all on the line right now against Matagua. Halfway through the round. And this would probably be a 10-8 round even without a knockdown. No doubt. For Matagua. Shades of Carl Franz and Jermaine Taylor. That's exactly right. Lopez needs to hold on. Lopez is in the four-corner offense, trying desperately to get through and buy time. You see the clock ticking. It's a matter of seconds. And maybe Matagua is a little punched out. God knows he should be. A right hand by Matagua. And if Juan Manuel Lopez makes it through this round, let's not forget to give him credit for amazing power. Oh, amazing. The fact that he's made it this far is amazing. His legs are totally gone. What courage shown by Lopez. Half a minute left. It's a time game for Matagua. Big right to body. Can he even get a knockdown? That might help him make this a 10-7 round. A left hook. Can Lopez stay up? countdown from 17 and Lopez looked at the big screen to see how much time was left drama wow. of the highest nature here at Madison Square Garden everybody in this arena is on their feet and he made it he made it will he win or will Rogers Batagua end up with this decision what an amazing boxing match When this fight ended, every one of those people who are now on their feet were on their feet. They rose almost in unison for the last 25 or 30 seconds of this fight to see if this man, Roger Matagua, could get Lopez down and would Lopez stay on his feet. It is now going to be in the judges' hands. And let's revisit, Raul, that dramatic be, last round. Yeah, Ma Matawa, all straight right hands in this round. There you go again. And left hooks. Straight rights. And left hooks. Had Lopez. There we go again. Same overhand. Had him hurt. Out on his legs, out on his feet. I, I just don't know how Juan Ma Lopez survived this round. I mean, he must have been an excellent condition to be able to take that kind of punishment he was hurt 10 seconds into the round he, he was basically in a daze the whole three round i mean the whole three minutes of that round and we see this action you can see how lopez is just not steady on his feet and matagua throwing wild punches rogers matagua not exactly a great technician but man he oh. is aggressive and he has grit and determination and he landed 35 power shots in that round. And there was where Lopez was actually looking at yeah. the clock. Very smart of him, yeah. On the screen to try and figure out. He, even though he was out on his feet and, you know, days, but he thought about looking at the clock and see how much time was left. Still had the presence of mind. Now, Rogers Matagua believes he did, did enough over the last four or five rounds of this fight to win this decision. And he may I, have or he may not have. And now the last round, I don't think anybody could make a case for that round not being a 10-8 round. Oh, I definitely. know there was not a knockdown, but yeah. if ever there was a 10-8 round with no knockdown, that had to be it. Yeah, that, that had to be it. That, that was the biggest round of the whole fight. And, and Matagua had the biggest round of the, of that's the whole a very fight. Good, that's a very good point. Of course, that's that's not going to... My unofficial scorecard, that didn't make him the winner. And you have to give it to Lopez again to be able to survive. Yeah.
Lopez put a lot of rounds in the bank early in that yeah, fight. He did. Also, he scored a knockdown in round five, yes. which gave him a 10-8 round. So right. let's just say that that negates this 10-8 round. Then we're left with the rest of the rounds. Well, Michael Buffer is, I, we believe, has collected the scorecard. He's checking him over to make sure he does not make an error in this and to make sure the uh, he is going to read them correctly. And that's good judgment as you look at Lopez, who knows that he was tested and then some here tonight. Michael Buffer's ready. Let's go to him. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Madison Square Garden, a round of applause for one of the great fights in many a year. Challenger and champion, let's give them a hand. We go to the scorecards. Carlos Ortiz scores the bout. 116-116. Kevin Morgan, 114, 113. Steve Weisfeld, 115, 111. To the winner by majority decision, Porriquas! Tejagua Puerto Rico, still the undefeated WBO. Junior featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel. Juan Manuel. A mixed reaction from this crowd, and clearly you would expect that. It was a very close fight. The judges, yes. for the most part, very close. A majority decision, though Steve Weisfeld had it a little bigger at 115, 111. Very disappointing for Rogers Matagua, that's for sure.